Welcome to VA Voices, a periodic news and information series from the VA for those serving in uniform, retirees, and veterans. My name is Andre Bowser. I'm the Public Affairs Officer at Westover Air Reserve Base, and I'm also the Public Affairs Officer at the VA Central Western Massachusetts Healthcare System. Our guest is Mr. Lee Paz. He's a transition patient advocate for the VA Central Western Massachusetts Healthcare System, and he's also a member of the Transition Care Management Team which has it, it's one of its focuses working with veterans of Operation Iraqi Freedom, Operation Enduring Freedom, and Operation New Dawn. First things first, Lee, please uh, tell everyone about yourself, uh, a little bit about your military history and what you do for the VA. Sure, um, again my name is Lee Paz and uh, I spent four years active duty with the Marine Corps uh, as a supply NCO and then after that I joined the Army Reserves for nine years, uh, stationed right here on Westover. Um, Back in 2008 to 2009, February of 2008, 2009, I deployed to Iraq and was part of Minstiki Multinational, Tran Multinational Transition Security Command Iraq, uh, where I worked for headquarters battalion out there. So, um, so after you know, after I came back, I came back as a vet. Um, I actually came back by myself. I was at what they call an individual augmentee. So the unit didn't deploy, uh, the, the army handpicked me to deploy. So when I came back, I didn't come back with the unit. So I didn't know a lot of the resources that were available um, through the VA. Um, and, and which kind of plays and ties into the job that I do now. So when I came back, and it struggled, but I did use the VA system. Can you describe uh, you know, how that process was? Uh, did you have to uh, go into a VA? Did someone refer you to a VA? How did that work? Yeah, so I mean, to be quite honest, what happened was, you know, things, when I came home, there was a, a noticeable difference. My mm -hmm. family had seen a noticeable difference in me. In yourself? In myself, correct. Okay. Um, I didn't quite notice it, but, you know, after a while, certain, certain things happened, which I was asked, you know, to go to the VA and, 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 get, and receive some help, which I did. And um, it was a pleasant experience, actually, from the time I walked in to get enrolled, although I was nervous. You know, being um, just going by myself into this big healthcare system. Um, but once I got there, I was enrolled. I was, you know, met with warm smiles. Um, uh, someone transitioned me to the other person, um, which was the transition care management team, uh, formerly known as OAFOF team. I did not know that I was that I was actually uh, eligible for VA healthcare. Um, they might have told me when I was demobbing. Um, but it was specifically a captain I ran into who said, "Hey, make sure you go to the VA, get five years of enhanced healthcare." And what that kind of mean, uh, what that means is, is that you have, so someone coming off of active duty has five years of enhanced healthcare at no cost to them uh, for any service-related conditions. Okay. So when you come in, uh, let's say you come in with a back problem, you can see you can get get seen by a primary care, um, you get seen by a physical therapy. And, and you can do that up to five years with no cost. Someone coming off of active duty, straight off of active duty, mm -hmm. um, are gonna have that five years. Now, if you've been out for a long time, um, then there's gonna be requirements you have to meet. Uh, and and it, if you enroll, they'll, they'll walk you through that process and let you know if you're eligible or not. Uh, and so, talk a little bit about that process of applying. Um, is it recommended that individuals call? And if they were to call, could they ask for you to get some uh, in input and advice? Absolutely. I mean, you can always ask for me. Um, if you ask for me and I can help you, I most certainly will help you. If you call and it's something to do that's outside of my scope of my duty, I will patch you through, through to the right person. Um, you know, I know that veterans, one of the things that I know veterans uh, dislike most is to be bounced around from mm -hmm. caller to caller. And so I, I, you know, I can at least ensure that you're going to the right person. And again, that number would be 413-584-4040. Uh, so you're a transition <coughs> patient advocate. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps you could tell the viewers a little bit about your job, uh, how you would assist them if they were to call you. Sure. So primarily my job is to go to military treatment facilities and pick up severely injured veterans from places like Walter Reed and transition them back home. Now, I've only had to do that once and I hope that I never have to do that again because that means I'm, I'm picking up s someone who's severely injured. So while I'm not doing that, what I, what I primarily do is 
make sure that veterans know what they're entitled to. There's a big misconception out there from the younger veterans that it's for the older people. Uh, th they don't need it. I have health care through my job, whatever the case may be. Um, uh, one big thing that I always hear is save it for the guy who really needs it. And I always say to them that you're actually doing a disservice to your fellow veteran if you don't enroll because when you do enroll and you get seen by a doctor, we're, the VA gets money for that. And with that money, we upgrade our equipment, we hire new people. Um, you know, so you're actually helping your fellow veteran by enrolling. And so when to you not use the system is to do the service. To sure. use the system helps to keep it vibrant and, and help the veteran community. Absolutely, at large. absolutely. But it also it, it ensures coverage for you because mm -hmm. people always say, "I, I have health care. I'm, I'm good," but I have seen it in my in my six years at the VA where guys are doing really well. They've got health care, and then the next day they don't. Something happened. They don't have health care and now they struggle to get into the VA or they have to you know jump some hoops whereas if you've just enrolled it's just really another option uh, you can have health care and be seen on the outside but this just gives you another option and ensures that when times are bad that you can always come back and be seen at the VA and you know you're putting this call out to veterans to seek assistance uh, and to perhaps even come to you mm -hmm. uh, just to play devil's advocate advocate uh, some people might be hesitant to uh, you know, work through someone who works at the VA uh, because uh, they'd rather go to an outside organization for representation. Uh, what would you say to that veteran who might be uh, reluctant to approach you because you work for the organization? Mm -hmm. Well, first and foremost, I want to say that the outside organizations are great. Um, but when you come to me, I'm a veteran first. I wear my veteran hat first, and I treat every veteran the way I wanted to be, uh, the way I would want to be treated, or the way I would want my father or, or anyone related to me to be treated. Um, so I, I do, I do come in, you know, I do work like that. But I also do know this system really well, and I always say that, you know, there's there's certain organizations or all organizations that deal with the VA are are middlemen. You know, I'm not the middleman. I am the guy who can who can get things done. I'm not saying that other organizations can't, but I work really, really hard to ensure that the veteran gets exactly what they need. Uh, can they ask uh, an operator uh, directly for you, or even if they have questions about the information they fill out, uh, somehow you know get to you? And, and would that just be a matter of giving your name to the operator? Sure, yeah. Once you get the operator, you can just always ask for Lee Paz. Okay. Um, if it's an eligibility question, you can either ask for myself or you can ask for the eligibility uh, office and, and you can get information from them. Well, I want to thank you, Lee, for coming uh, onto Channel 50 and uh, we hope that uh, veterans out there receive this word and uh, seek assistance. And thank you all for watching VA Voices.